Your Life, the program for all America. Brought to you by New Speed Bath Lilt, the only home permanent that takes the mess out of waving while it gives your hair better body than any other wave you can use. And Gentle Joy, the dishwashing liquid that's made to be mild three times a day. And now, here he is, Mr. This Is Your Life himself, Ralph Edwards, speaking to you from the Burbank Airport in Burbank, California. Hello, everybody. Welcome to This Is Your Life. At the controls of the plane you see flying towards us is Mrs. Zadie Bunker of Palm Springs, California, America's only flying great-grandmother, a wonderful lady, 71 years of age, who flies her own airplane all over the USA. She thinks no more of landing a plane through the complicated skyways of a big city airport than you do of driving your car to the corner grocery. Now, to surprise her, our cameras are at the Pacific Air Motive ramp here at Burbank Airport, Burbank, California. She was told that Tom Tower, aviation editor of the Los Angeles Examiner, wanted to take some film shots of her to go with a story about her flying career. This is a bit now, right? She's taxing her uh, plane toward us now, so let's walk out and break the news to this unique great-grandmother. We'll let her cut her props here. As soon as she walks out. Now, let's see. Oh, the business that you're flying around was just to get you on television coast to coast. We want to tell all about you, Mrs. Bunker. Uh, you've had flying thrills galore. You've been in international air races. You've met the Queen of England, and that's only a starter. Are you game to relive it with us? Uh, well, I would... Uh do you, do you understand what, what's, what's happening here? Now, you know, my family said I now, always talk. I'm not sure that they're... <laughs> Zaddy Bunker, we're going to take you over to our NBC studios where our audience is waiting to meet you, okay? And while we're on our way, here's Bob Warren. Come on. Well, sir. <laughs> the surprise you witnessed earlier took place at the airport half an hour ago. Ralph and our subject have just arrived at our studio, and here they are, Ralph Edwards and our flying lady from Palm Springs, California, Mrs. Zaddy Bunker. <laughs> oh, you can sit over here if you want, Mrs. Bunker. My. Thank you, Bob Warren. Thank you very much. Mrs. Bunker, that was pretty exciting, wasn't it? Yes. It was well, exciting for me. It I, was surprising. <laughs> it was indeed. Well, now, even before you took up flying, uh, your life was busy and full. What did you used to say you were going to do when you got to be 65? Well, I said that when I got 65, I was going to quit working and uh, get me a rocking chair and live off my old age pension. <laughs> Instead of doing that, when you're 65, you own your own airplane. And uh, what did you give you your plane for a name? I didn't do that. The young man who remembered that I'd said I would get me a rocking chair. He put the name on without me knowing it. And what did he call it? Zaddy's rocking chair. That's <laughs> <laughs> the only thing he ever saw me sit in. So he thought that was the rocking chair. That's where you've done your sitting, with the world flying by underneath you. Into your flying, you've carried a wonderful faith that the good Lord's always watching over you. In 1954, you take off from Dallas, Texas, and find that your plane's canopy won't close. Now, this sliding top of your plane's cockpit is stuck, and it remains open about three or four inches. You continue your flight, but you feel uncomfortable, and your engine seems to you to be overheating, though you can find nothing wrong. When you land to refuel at Shreveport, Louisiana, what happens to you there when you step from your plane? Well, I didn't feel like I usually do when I step from a plane. I walked around where there was a little grass and laid down on it. Yeah. <laughs> You didn't feel well at all. And what did happen? Well, the next thing I knew, why they were, I was in the office and they was washing my face. Yes. So, well, they, um, I found then, when I checked my engine, that the exhaust uh, manifold was loose from the engine. So I was getting the, some fumes, you see, from my And engine. if it hadn't been for that little opening? Why, well, I, I wouldn't be on your show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are a lot more of your flying adventures, but before we come to them, let's make a flight over the landscape of your life. Your father and mother were Elijah and Francis Dawson. 
You're born on their farm near Rolla, Missouri. In the same farmhouse, you're married at 18 to Ed Bunker, a young man who works for a lumber company. And there at home, your daughter Frances is born. Before long, your husband's parents move to San Jacinto, California. With high hopes, you and Ed follow them west, but you lose every cent you've saved by investing in a potato ranch. But on that ranch is an old two-cylinder Buick car. It had the sidewinder, the uh, you wound yeah, it from the uh, side. The uh, engine was under the seat, and you cranked it from the side. And you and Ed uh, tinker with it, repair it constantly, and get fascinated with its innards. You took a correspondence course in automobile mechanics, didn't you? Yeah, yes. Broke but confident that you know a lot about autos, you decide to go into the auto repair business. Zaddy borrowed a tiny bit of money from me, and with that, she ch and Ed chucked off to Palm Springs. That's really... I <laughs> it was a little desert oasis then. Only 25 settlers <laughs> lived there. All the rest were Indians. Those are the voices of your two sisters who yeah. followed you to Palm Springs. Yeah. Here from Palm Springs are your sister Lily, Mrs. Frank Goff, and your sister Henrietta, Mrs. Ellis Parker. <laughs> Why don't you? I am in the middle, you know. <laughs> in, in the yes, age, right? Yes, Quite a zaddy. And, no, although you look older. Oh, my goodness, you're <laughs> the youngest one uh, in the studio here tonight, I believe. Why did Zaddy and her husband uh, choose this tiny village of Palm Springs to go into the garage business, Ms. Goff? Well, they had heard that there was to be a road built through the desert, and they thought it'd be a help to their business to... Settle in Palm Springs. Well, uh, where did you live at first, uh, Miss Bunker? I lived in a tent house first two years I was there. Yeah. There weren't many houses in Palm Springs. And what did Zaddy do to help support her family, Miss Parker? Well, she sewed, uh, uh, took in sewing at 25 cents an hour, <laughs> and she would uh, haul out motors who got stuck in the sand. But most of the time, you'd find her lying full length under some car taking it apart and putting it up again. <laughs> Your favorite costume in these days is a pair of uh, bibbed overalls. That is a picture of you. A blue work shirt and an old felt hat. Now, what happens one day when a swanky car uh, drives up for gas and you're working the gas pump, Ms. Parker? The man asked me if there were not some Indians living around there. And about that time, Zaddy came walking across the street with her work goes on and he said is that one of your Indians and I said no I don't think so that's my sister <laughs> <laughs> thank you Mrs. Frank Goff Mrs. Ellis Parker and Bob you see that in the soon you obtain the first chauffeur's license ever to be granted a woman in California you begin to pick up money driving tourists on all day trips as far as to the Salton Sea and back yeah. Your uh, friendliness and your high spirits make a big impression on tourists and townspeople alike. We, we consider Zaddy the biggest booster our little village ever had. She really believed in the future of Palm Springs. The voice of a lady who has known you since those early days. Here from Palm Springs is your very good friend, Mrs. Steve Vidosi. <laughs> One thing you've never forgotten about Zaddy is her strength. Isn't that so, Mrs. Vidosic? Indeed, yes. I remember watching Zaddy unload her um, truck in front of the little old desert inn. And uh, she would lift a big trunk and uh, um, carry it in on her back as if it were nothing. Along with Zaddy's well, it high... wasn't very <laughs> big, I think. <laughs> oh, yes, it was. Along with Zaddy's high spirits went a keen sense of adventure. Didn't she try to find a lost gold mine one time, Ms. Vidosi? <laughs> oh, yes. Some, uh, she got a hold of an old map somewhere. That old lady that said it had been given to her when she was a child. Mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> and uh, she... Um, she um, Tramped all over the desert, Tramped all over the desert looking for that one spot that was marked on that map. Found everything but the gold that was on the map. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, uh, she, d she didn't find any gold, eh? No, no, but she built a reputation. She sure did. Thank you, Mrs. Steve Vidosic of Palm Springs, California. <laughs> With hard work and thrift, first you lease, and then you buy the land your original garage stood on. 
that land stood smack in the middle of what one day would become the fabulous resort and vacation playground of Palm Springs. Your good judgment has brought you the financial reward you deserve. About 1925, your husband buys a ranch in the San Jacinto Mountains. Yeah. As time goes on, uh, he won't leave his ranch, you won't leave Palm Springs, so finally you both go your separate ways. But undaunted, you forge ahead, and wherever and whenever anything interesting was going on, you wanted to be in on it. Zaddy, you were in your 60s when you turned to me and said, do you think I could learn to fly an airplane? Well, that's the man who gave you your oh, first flying right? lesson and who was also a uh, famous test pilot today, an aviation oh, consultant Fred. with the company's defense industry from Phoenix, Arizona, Fred Smith. <laughs> now, let's see, Zaddy is 63 when you two talk about flying. Uh, did she think she was too old to learn, Mr. Smith? Yes, Ralph, she thought she was, but... I said, that's nonsense, Zaddy. You're so young at heart, you could do anything you wanted to do. And Ralph, she had a real talent for flying. She had absolutely no fear of the airplane, completely relaxed from the start, and she really loved that airplane and loved to fly. But uh, you never let Zaddy solo. Uh, she never flew the plane by herself while you were teaching her. But I intended to solo Zaddy, and I would have soloed her, but then it took me away from Palm Springs, and... I reluctantly turned her over to a new instructor. And he wouldn't solo me. Yes, <laughs> he wouldn't solo you. It was you. a conspiracy. <laughs> We're going to come to that. Thank you, to test pilot no. with Fred Smith of Phoenix, Arizona. In a moment, Zaddy Bunker, we'll... Uh, Tell about a plot that was afoot in Palm Springs, the one that you were just kind of talking about then. The plans by worried think, friends and family to... I don't to think we should tell people that we have that kind of people <laughs> in Palm Springs. <laughs> well, you foiled them, see? So you relax a moment there, and uh, while Bob Warren comes in for a landing with this word about joy. Uh, back to This Is Your Life. Mrs. Zaddy Bunker of Palm Springs, California, America's flying great-grandmother. When Fred Smith leaves town, he turns you over to a new pilot instructor. At first, you believe you're doing well in your lessons, but soon it seems to you that it's high time you were soloing. Every time the subject comes up, your instructor discourages you. Uh, did you begin to think uh, you weren't any good at flying? I began to think, well, perhaps Fred was wrong, that I did something different when I was with him than I did with this, so I quit. Well, the truth was you, you were plenty good. Uh, what you don't know, that time is that a conspiracy is underfoot behind your back. Yeah. What was going on? I Sandy? didn't find it out for six months. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a group of friends told the instructor that what? They uh, said, uh, well, he asked him not to solo me. And uh, my very nice son-in-law said, well, you know, mother, you shouldn't be angry. You should be happy. So many people think so much of you. They really want you to get hurt. Well, Zaddy, we've rounded up two of the guilty parties oh, in that plot you? against you. Here they are from their home in Palm Springs, California. Your daughter, Frances, and that son-in-law, her husband, Mr. Earl Sleeby. <laughs> I should have done. I thought I was coming in for far story. What, what was behind the conspiracy to keep uh, Zaddy from flying? Earl, just, just misguided love. <laughs> for you, <laughs> Ralph. Yeah. Uh, we were all so crazy about uh, Gramsci. Uh, we were uh, genu 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 genuinely concerned about her welfare. Mm -hmm. But we uh, didn't realize how much you wanted to fly. Well, how did your mother learn about this plot, uh, Francis, Miss Treby? We broke down and confessed, and then the fur really started to fly. <laughs> <laughs> she really told us off. No. She said, I'll show you, sonny boy. <laughs> I wasn't made of chicken livers. <laughs> <laughs> so with fire in your eyes, Zaddy Bunker, you start out to find some airport where they didn't know anybody from Palm Springs. Getting as far away as San Bernardino, you are successful in your search. That was the third airport. Mrs. Yeah. Bunker came to me at the Tri-City Airport and told me that she was determined to soul. It's the pilot who finally let you uh, win your wings Mel. from Redlands, California. Uh, Here's Mel your friend, Turnbull. Mel Turnbull. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when Mrs. Bunker came to you for lessons, uh, were you surprised at her age, Mr. Turnbull? I was, but when I saw how fast uh, she reacted in an emergency, uh, I went ahead with... Yeah? Well, what, what emergency did you try her out on? We were coming in for a landing, and... Uh, 
without uh, warning her, I turned the engine off, and it didn't bother her a bit. She just said, well, the prop stopped, and I'm flying a glider. <laughs> and, on the end of <laughs> and on your 65th birthday, you pass your final flight test and become a licensed yeah. private pilot. Thank you, daughter Frances Streeby, Earl Streeby, and Mel Turnbow of Redlands, California. <laughs> you take your plane to air meets, to races. You become a famous member of the Women's National Flying Club, the 99. At the age of 68, you take up the next challenge in flying, the mastery of twin-engine airplanes. Zaddy became the oldest person in America ever to receive a multi-engine pilot's rating. Well, that's your flying pal, yeah. whom we uh, <laughs> got in on this whole thing, and he yeah. was the responsible. Yeah. From Paul Springs, yeah. Paul Springs here, where he is the head of the Bird Respiratory <laughs> Rehabilitation Center, is Mr. Forrest Bird. Forrest, thanks so much for uh, all the part you played in this, fooling Zaddy to get her here. You gave Zaddy her twin-engine instruction. Now, does it take a lot more skill to fly the twin-engine craft, Mr. Bird? Of course it does. Yes, uh, they're so much heavier and more powerful, and we have about 20 more instruments to watch. But Zaddy's big day came in New Jersey in 1955, when a CA inspector and I took her up for her exam. We really gave her the acid test. Again, we cut off an engine on her without warning. But Zaddy flew so skillfully, she not only maintained her altitude, she actually gained altitude on one engine. That's <laughs> terrific. Besides her flying, uh, in her 45 years in Palm Springs, Zaddy has never turned down anyone in need and has given of her time and funds for any number of worthy causes, hasn't she, Mr. Bird? Yes, Ralph. She's always helping. Uh, Zaddy learned that I was working on a breathing respirator for high-altitude pilots. And she helped interest doctors in my device, and also she helped pay the bills to establish what is now the Bird Respiratory Rehabilitation Center in Palm Springs. Thank you, Mr. Forrest Bird. Thank, Thank you me. very much. Sitting in our audience tonight, Zaddy, are two people who are most grateful for your concern, your personal generosity, Mrs. George Basolo and her son Stephen from Hillsboro, right in there. See? And there's Mr. Basolo and Judy there, too. Now, Zaddy Bunker, we want you to take all of us along in imagination on what is perhaps the most exciting flight you ever made. It's 1955, and you've entered the Women's International Air Race from Washington, D.C. to Havana, Cuba. On the second lap of that race, you take off from Raleigh, North Carolina, heading for Florence, South Carolina. Will you tell us about the storm you encountered and how you lost your way? I had uh, an Omni, you know, put in that plane so I could fly around storms and then pick up a uh, course and use it. So in, I didn't follow Fred Smith's instruction that if you... You watch your watch and your compass and see how fly, far you fly that way so you'll know how far to fly back and so forth. Yes. And I got into this storm. It was frightening. And then I said, well, dear Lord, I guess you're going to have to take over. I'll do the best I know how, and the rest is up to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, You flew for uh, an hour or more, didn't you, there, trying to find some checkpoints uh, on the <laughs> ground to find out where you were? I flew more than four hours. Is that so? Uh, and how much of that, uh, t one hour where you didn't really know where you were at all, or all four? No, I, about one of them, mm -hmm. yes. About one I did, couldn't find any checkpoint I could recognize, and the antenna had leaked on my wonderful Omni, so I couldn't pick up any course from it. You were running out of I gas, got, too. Yes, I knew I was go running out of gas, so I decided I'd find a field. Yes, and then, uh, meanwhile, as you're flying around, lost, a girl uh, who was also flying her plane in that race is waiting on the field at Florence, uh, South Carolina, frantic with worry about you. Surely. <laughs> I knew Zaddy was two hours overdue and that she would run out of gas at any moment, so I took off to look for her. Yes, it's the girl who played her part in a flying miracle to find you. <laughs> Former winner of the <laughs> Women's Transcontinental Air Races, runner-up in the International Air Race, real flying ace herself, in Long Beach, California, Mrs. Frances Barra. Now, the authorities on the field uh, didn't want you to take off to search for Zaddy, did they, Miss Barra? No, they didn't. Uh, the weather was bad, and they didn't want two of us in trouble. <laughs> but I had a real urge to go, so I rolled my plane out and took off anyway, praying that I might find Zaddy by some miracle. Now, where were you, Mrs. Bunker, when you caught sight of Mrs. Barra's plane? I was just 
almost touching the ground and the good Lord said, you better look up, old lady. So I looked up and saw Francis in her plane and followed her. You lead Zaddy straight to the airport for a yes. safe landing. How much gas did she have left, Miss Barrett? Well, she only had a few drops left and um, she had flown four and a half hours on what is normally a four hour supply. And so no wonder that Zaddy says God is her co-pilot. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Frances Barra of Long Beach, California. Well, we've called you the flying great-grandmother, and we know it'll give you joy to have your grandchildren and great-grandchildren with you on this night. So here, first, are two of your granddaughters, Susan and Dorothy Streeby. Oh, and your third granddaughter, Jessica, Mrs. Philip Miller, with your great-grandchildren, Gary and Deborah. Here. Oh, my. <laughs> this is your life, Mrs. Zaddy Bunker. What an inspiration you've been to our senior citizens everywhere. You may think that uh, you've had many thrills in your life, but the best is yet to come, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. First, here's Eve Arden with a word about Lilt. Well, Mrs. Zaddy Bunker, your future is really going to be uh, something. Uh, a few days ago, the U.S. Air Force promised you a ride in a jet fighter, and they asked you up to George Air Force Base to take a physical exam, didn't they? Yes. Thank now, you. they put you through an uh, altitude pressure chamber test and all that, and uh, I want you to know that this is your life was behind all those goings on. Oh, what they didn't tell you is the big news we have for you right now, and here to tell you about it is the first American pilot ever to fly through the barrier of sound, Colonel Charles Jaeger of the U.S. Air Force. Well, uh, Zaddy, the Air Force wants you to come up to George on Armed Forces Day, our open house at George Air Force Base on May the 16th, and be our guest of honor. Now, we know you want to fly on a jet fighter, so on that day, <coughs> we've set up a North American F-100F Super Saver for you to ride in, and thereby you will become the oldest woman ever to exceed the speed of sound. Thank you, <laughs> Colonel Chuck Yeager. How does that sound? How you get to meet my family, you'll get to meet Daddy, tonight there'll be a big party in your honor at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, where all your family and friends have been staying. You'll have your own film of this program along with a 16 millimeter Bell and Howell sound projector and this electric eye movie camera to take flying movies of your own. And uh, Lilt also wants you to have this beautiful gold charm bracelet Bob Warren is giving to you now. It has been especially designed by Marshall Jewelers of New York City to commemorate the details of your wonderful life and flying career. Finally, This Is Your Life will erect a bronze marker at the location of your original garage in Palm Springs, honoring you as a pioneer woman of that area and as the flying great-grandmother. This Is Your Life, Mrs. Zaddy Bunker. How well you exemplify the thrilling words of Robert Browning. Grow old along with me, the best is yet to be the last of life for which the first is made. Good night, and God bless you. Our Omicron guests have flown to Hollywood via TWA's luxurious jet stream, non-stop service, coast to coast and overseas. Fly the finest. Fly TWA jet stream service. This Is Your Life has been brought to you by new Speed Bath Lilt, the only home permanent that takes the mess out of waving while it gives your hair better body than any other wave you can use. And Gentle Joy, the dishwashing liquid that's made to be mild three times a day. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, the story of a person who's been followed for 32 years but has never been caught. Be with us then on This Is Your Life next week. Good night, everyone. This Is Your Life is a Ralph Edwards production. Produced by Axel Gruenberg and directed by Richard Gottlieb. This Is Your Life would like to thank North American Aviation for much of the special film used on tonight's program. Be sure to watch Loretta Young on most of these same stations every Sunday night.